Good morning, Twin Tiers. This is WENY News. Good morning, Twin Tiers. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Kelly Meyer. And I'm Joe Melillo. Got a lot of stuff to get to, but most importantly, we have weather to talk, tell you about. Ryan Bells is over there talking about it. Let's throw it over to him. Yeah, that's for sure. We got lots of weather to talk about today. We got winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories for the entire viewing area, and they are in effect and they'll go throughout the day today and into the morning tomorrow. The pink shaded counties are the winter storm warnings, and the brown shaded county is the two winter weather advisories for our viewing area. They'll go out throughout the day as we see snowfall throughout the day, about two to four inches, and then by tomorrow morning, look for upwards of seven inches of snow on the ground. Temperatures across the area right now, 18 degrees is where we sit. So upper teens to mid teens is where we're sitting at this hour. Our hourly forecast though, mapping out the rest of your day for you. We're going to hit our five degree guarantee of 18 degrees and cool it right down from there under snow showers. All right, thanks a lot, Ryan. And like Ryan was just talking about, this winter storm is going to be a big one here in the Twin Tiers. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo sent out a press release about staying safe and what to expect from the state. Cuomo is act activating the State Emergency Operations Center this morning at 10 a.m. The governor is also saying major highways may close, including the Thruway, Interstate 84, and Interstate 684, as well as Long Island Expressway. Remember, never follow a snow plow too closely or attempt to pass one. Also, don't let those pipes freeze in your home. Keep the thermostat set at above 55 degrees and let faucets drip a little bit as well. And a winter storm warning is in effect here in central New York from this morning till about Friday at 10 a.m. Well, it's not just New York. The northern tier is bracing for the storm, too. Downstate, the storm could dump up to 10 inches of snow in the Pocono Mountains and several inches elsewhere. The National Weather Service has posted a winter storm warning for northeastern Pennsylvania. They expect the snowfall will be the heaviest Thursday afternoon and evening before tapering off Friday morning. Forecasters say strong northerly winds will force temperatures into the single digits. Monster storms making headlines all over the country. It battered the Midwest and is taking aim here at Northeast this morning. More than 70 million people are in its path preparing for this blizzard. And Arena 9 has the latest on the storm that is already leaving its mark and will eventually affect 21 states. 2014 has begun with an extreme blast of winter weather. A huge storm has been moving across much of the country, bringing with it freezing temperatures and lots of snow. In Minneapolis, temperatures dropped to around zero. Fire crews struggled to deal with a massive blaze following an explosion at an apartment complex. Water used to fight the flames quickly turned to ice in the extreme temperatures. And in Indiana, slippery snow-covered roads are making travel difficult for drivers. Nearly a foot of snow has already fallen in Chicago with more expected today. Residents are doing their best to dig out. It does the job. It did the steps, it did the porch, now it's doing the car. You know, you make do with what you got right now. The storm is now headed towards the East Coast and New England, where residents have been preparing for this onslaught of winter weather. New Haven, Connecticut shelters are gearing up to help those who spend much of their time on the streets. Just come here just to get my rest and stay warm. In Situate, Massachusetts, repairs have been made to a seawall that was damaged in a storm last February. The problem is the tides are just huge. They're, they're the highest that they can possibly be. Just a reminder, everyone, be safe when driving around and uh, make sure you follow our tips. We put this story online at WENY.com for all your information. All right, we have an update for you on the standoff in Elmira that left the neighborhood on edge yesterday. According to the Elmira Police Department, 32-year-old Paul Turner was taken into custody after the standoff at 327 East Center Street. Police responded to the home around 945 Wednesday for a disturbance between Turner and a woman. After police arrived, Turner barricaded himself and made threats to police, saying he was armed. SWAT teams tried to negotiate after surrounding the home and then launched tear gas canisters to get him out. Turner has been charged with attempted assault, menacing, and criminal obstruction of breathing. A Tioga County, Pennsylvania man is in jail this morning, charged with rape after allegedly breaking into a woman's home on New Year's Eve. He held a knife to the woman's throat while allegedly committing the crime. Police say William White from Westfield, Pennsylvania, went to the woman's home in Potter County on Tuesday and raped her. They say he put a utility knife to her throat. White allegedly told the victim he would kill her if she told police. White is charged with rape, terroristic threats, and three kinds of assault. He's in Potter County Jail on $75,000 bail. 
And we've been getting a lot of Facebook messages about this one. An assault in Ithaca on Sunday night left a woman with a large laceration on her cheek. Police were called to Moon Shadows Bar and Nightclub after someone called about an assault. When officers arrived, they found about 20 people fighting near the rear door of the nightclub. They then found the woman who was sustained the large cut or laceration to the right side of her face. Several people were detained and this at the scene. However, no arrests have been made just yet. If you have any information on the incident, please contact the Ithaca Police Department and Investigative Division at 607-272-3245. Taxes on gasoline and diesel in Pennsylvania are higher this morning. The first of three increases that will happen over the next three years. Effective on Wednesday, a new law is making increases to gasoline taxes. This time, they're going up by 9.5 cents per gallon, while diesel taxes are going up by almost 13 cents a gallon. The tax revenue is supposed to stem a rising backlog of needed repairs or modernization for bridges, highways, and mass transit facilities. While many fuel distributors and gas station owners say they'll pass along the higher cost, gas prices are expected to decline on average in 2014. And over in New York, the state education commissioner is not backing down when it comes to the statewide implementation of the Common Core standards. Now, he says rigorous standards will be better in will better prepare students for college and careers. In a letter to school superintendents and principals across the state, State Education Commissioner John King says misinformation seems to be a problem. He says that the state has taken steps to ease the burden of new testing on students and teachers. But on the other hand, a spokesman for the New York State United Teachers Union says commissioner's letter is another indication that the state isn't listening to the public's objections. The State Board of Regents recommends an increase in state education funding next fiscal year. And it's about to be lights out for light bulbs as most of us know them. January 1st, 2014 marked the end of an era when it comes to incandescent light bulbs. The 40 and 60 watt bulbs are being phased out due to a provision in the energy efficiency law signed by former President George W. Bush. The alternatives include compact fluorescent EcoVantage and LED bulbs. In comparison to the traditional 60 watt bulb, compact fluorescent bulbs use about 13 watts and LEDs about 9. A regular incandescent also lasted, um, based on usage, about one to two years was the lifespan of that bulb. In a compact fluorescent, it's about seven to nine years. And then in an LED, you're looking at 20 to 22 years. The downside is the new light bulbs will cost you a little more than the regular bulbs, but only having to purchase them about once a decade or more could prove a huge savings in the long run. And the Boy Scouts of America hit a major milestone over 100 years of service, and now openly gay young men may join the organization after a drawn-out battle to open the door for gay Boy Scouts. The controversial issue garnered national attention. Last May, 61% of Scout leadership voted in favor of lifting the ban. 17-year-old Pascal Tessier plans to be the first group's first openly gay Eagle Scout. He joined the Scouts in sixth grade. The ban on openly gay Scout leaders remains intact. Let's take a look at some of the stories you'll be reading in today's Star Gazette. More on the people killed in the New Year's Eve car accident in Newfield. National recognition is growing for our area's wineries, and a new big name is coming to the region. Find out who is. The state education chief defends Common Core and blasts misinformation. Find out what else they have to say in the Star Gazette. And when you read it, make sure to look out for John, Ron, Ryan's five-degree guarantee. <laughs> Ron, just, Ver Ron Burgundy up there. I just joined the names together. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, well, the time is 640. Coming up after the break, minimum wage workers in New York and 12 other states will be getting bigger paychecks. We have a report from D.C. after the break. But first, here's your business report for today.